We are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com and 80.1 FM, KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and now a world broadcasting tag team champions of the world and the Cruiserweight champion. I'm Ethan. I'm James. I'm Rob. And this is episode 173 of Beyond the Ropes. We are BTR Pro Wrestling Talk. Of course, I am your host, Ethan. You can find me on Twitter at EthanMV95. You can follow the analyst, James Williams, at, at, at JHW Reporter. And you can find our producer, Rob Flores, at Rob Flores Media. And don't forget the R2 DMs for Ethan. And of course, uh, at Real BTR Radio over on Twitter as well, Facebook.com forward slash Beyond the Ropes, and YouTube. Just search up Beyond the Ropes and you'll find over 170 episodes currently uploaded uh, this week. So, uh, interesting week, to say the least. Uh, let's talk about Jeff Hardy for, for a second. I think last week we talked about Jeff Hardy uh, being sent home after uh, some unusual, I guess, an unusual moment at a house show where he basically walked out of a match, in a tag team match with Drew McIntyre, um, and went into the crowd, I think celebrated with the crowd or something, interacted with the crowd for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, he was sent home later that night, and it was reported that he had, or he was refusing assistance uh, slash rehab. Um, a few days later, this was after we reported, so I believe it was a Thursday or even Wednesday night when we, uh, we recorded, it was revealed that Hardy had been released by the company after refusing assistance, saying he felt he didn't need it. Um, at least that's what allegedly is being reported. I know his brother Matt has uh, stated that he is good. His wife stated that he is good and that the entire family is good. Uh, Jeff made some sort of public appearance over on Matt's Twitch. I don't know if it's Matt's Twitch or Rebby's Twitch. I think I'm going to assume it's Matt's. Um, or he I don't kind know of if Matt it. even has a Twitch. Um, or does he? I think it does. Because I don't does. know. I know his wife. I know Rebby's on Twitch all the time. Yeah. She's not on that platform. Um but I know, I believe he was doing something and then Jeff Hard, Jeff was kind of in the background saying he was <laughs> listening to a song called Release Me. Um, <laughs> and so there's a kind of appearance there. He also stated that Jeff was in good spirits saying uh, he didn't think Jeff needed rehab and that uh, apparently Jeff uh, was drug tested. And that when the results come back, they're going to show that there's no reason for a drug t- uh, for rehab. Uh, saying that uh, Jeff is going to be happier, is happier than ever. So it's interesting. This whole situation is kind of weird because people thought, well, originally, clearly something's going on if he's acting like that, you know, walking out of, in a match and then, you know, getting released and refusing help. Uh, right. People think, you know, he relapsed and all that. And then his family seems like everything's okay. So I don't know. People are saying, well, he maybe intentionally got himself released. But I'm like, isn't there a I better mean, way? Isn't there a better yeah. way? To, can you just ask for a release? Yeah, in, right, a year, right. in a year where WWE seems to be happy to They're release They're more than willing. <laughs> yes, yes. Anyone, can you, can you just go up to Vince and say, you know, Kind of want yeah. out of my contract. Can no, I, I'm, I, I think it, it is kind of interesting though because one, it just sounds met like I don't know if messy is the word. I mean, it's just kind of unfortunate. Just just because even the way you kind of like even the way you kind of were talking about it there made it sound like, or maybe just the assumption of like, oh, like you know, Jeff Hardy's having another situation again or something like that. But then you also have the family saying that's not true. But then, I don't know, it's just weird. Like, oh, let's get him drug tested then. Like, you know, I guess, you know, however that came about, whether they asked him or he said, hey, let me prove it and take a drug test. But, you know, Jeff Hardy's getting older. I mean, it, I, I think the, the sad part of it is 
if they do kind of add or kind of end up on bad terms on his way, I mean, what are what are the chances that he really is able to kind of come back again? You know what I mean? Just because of his age or where he's at um, physically. So I think you know, he I, in the past ahead. this was going to be his last contract with WWE too. Did he? So, okay. I mean, and, yeah, and there hasn't been any real talk on where he's been at or where he's at with his contract. But I mean, from one report I saw, I don't remember where it was from. And then, I mean, it depends where this came from, not what side it came from. I mean, that matters too, but from what side of this situation it came from maybe, but it was like, oh yeah, Jeff Hardy was gearing up for a push or at least a a title run, I think with Roman or whoever, um, I think for the next pay-per-view or whatever. Again, I mean, when I see Jeff Hardy go in the crowd during a match, I mean, part of me is just thinking it's a house show. I mean, maybe he wasn't really going to be involved in the way that match finished. Like I didn't think anything of it, mm-hmm. but even then, you know, so people were freaking out about that, but then also someone showed a clip saying like showing him celebrating and doing his usual like taunts and stuff after the match celebrating with the fans. And, and he didn't necessarily look like wasted or anything. I mean, we've seen him when he's like out mm-hmm. of it. I mean, we saw the TNA incident, right? So mm-hmm. It wasn't any of that. I mean, to any degree of that. So, it, it, I don't know. It's interesting. I, I think I heard maybe, I don't know. If it was, I don't think it. Mm, I thought I heard after that house show, he did another TV taping. I think it was on SmackDown. I, I'm not sure if that's true or not. Or uh, I don't think it was SmackDown because he was supposed to. It was supposed to be this past week uh, at the Staples Center, which we'll, we'll talk about in a bit. Yeah. Uh, no, because they. I don't know if he did maybe raw or something. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, either but way though, I mean, the match and to the point where, I mean, I don't think they really had to, they could have done it anyways, but they had to send some of the raw guys over. So the raw superstars mm-hmm. uh, ended up appearing over on SmackDown mm-hmm. there to fill that void. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's a weird situation. <laughs> Cause if, I mean, if that's the way you, you if you want it out of your contract, that's just a weird yeah. way to go about it. I think it seems like you're kind of almost burning bridges in a sense. Uh, and I will say a number of uh, a number of wrestlers all were thanking Hardy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, seemingly, they all seemed like concerned for the guy. Uh, you know, saying you know he they hope they he gets the help he needs or hope he's in good spirits or whatever. Uh, but I know Big E tweeted about it. Bailey. Um, did anyone but, anyone that was in that match say anything uh well it was against happy corbin and madcap moss so i don't think they would tweet anything about it um i know and then he was who was he part of it? like sheamus and somebody else or something because wasn't there a six um, man drew, drew mcintyre mcintyre didn't say anything because he's been in the pro they've been in kind of a program together yeah uh mcintyre and hardy against uh corbin and moss I mean, it was going to be Jeff Hardy versus either Corbin or Moss, one of them on TV. Obviously, Mm -hmm. those plans changed. Um, But, yeah, I believe it was something like that. They didn't say anything. I believe a YouTuber, I don't know who it was, but was live streaming saying Jeff may have intentionally gotten himself, you know, fired. And apparently Corbin was in that chat. Just, uh, I think he laughed about it or something. So... Mm -hmm. He doesn't think, yeah. doesn't seem like any of the wrestlers or any of the talent think, at least that I'm aware of. Yeah, I mean, I, got himself released. Especially, I mean, there's other ways to go about it. I mean, Jeff, it's not like Jeff Hardy's some young kid, right? It's like he would know better. He would know, like, at the end of the day, they would want to stay on the best of terms, like, just for this, you know, I mean, they're going to go in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. They're going to go, you know, all this stuff has to happen. So, you know, I mean, crazier things have have happened and situations have happened and there's been things who have haven't, there's been people who haven't been affiliated with WWE after years and years for things that are less of a, of, of a situation than this. So, you know, I think everything will be fine to some degree, but we'll I don't know. Matt, Matt Hardy seems to be pushing toward a, an extreme reunion. He didn't uh, hesitate right away, almost immediately to say Jeff Hardy might be going to AEW. That he might go to AEW? I don't know. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe a one-off, but 
at that point? What do you, I mean, I will say, I will say Jeff has been looking a little slower over the last couple of months. Uh, How old is Jeff? He's 40. 40 something, huh? He's in his 40. I mean, he would have to be. I don't know if Rob think. said it. I think Rob might have said it. Because he's been, so. I mean, he was on Raw at like 17 and like 90. He is 44 years old. And during this run, I think he had already did a, he had, did, during this last run, he did some ladder bumps and stuff, you know, so. Very, uh, very famous ladder match last year for the IC title. Really good match, but, I think, with Styles and Sami Zayn, so. That's right. Uh, but I think he's been doing okay. I mean, I think, you know, I think he was, you know, I mean, these things kind of happen, but it was like, you know, he kind of did have a situation. Um, I mean, he went to rehab two years ago. So yeah, that, and it's it, fairly recent. But then, and then, but then he, I don't remember how old his daughter is, but I remember when he got his daughter, that kind of, I think, put things in perspective for him, or maybe like, I, I, like maybe he was, maybe that was Matt daughters. too. Maybe I'm thinking of Matt. Matt, one of them might have said something like that. Um, it might have been Matt. It might have Matt, been, I don't remember. They, my, all, they, I don't know. they each have several kids, so. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, we'll 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 see what what happens there. I mean, I think their father passed away this year, right? Or last year? Their their father did pass away. I believe it was this year. Jeff missed Mania. I think okay. it was around yeah. that time he missed Mania. I don't know if that was the sole reason, but you know, yeah, was, yeah. So we'll we'll see. We'll we'll see what happens. I think at the end of the day, Matt and Jeff will be in Hall of Fame for WWE. I think there's no doubt about that, and. You know, it's just kind of one of those things right now. But again, I don't think this is why he got it. That's not how he got it out of his contract. I think he would have just asked for it and they would have given it. They would have done it. No problem. You know, so. It's a weird situation. Um, we have some time still. I know Jim Cornette. Mm-hmm. I listened to Cornette uh, mm-hmm. talk about it. There's a segment on his YouTube. I think I did hear that one too, but don't remember. Uh, don't he basically said WWE basically had no choice from a business perspective. Um whether or not you know whether or not that he did relapse you know it's still like from his history he's had incidents and if they keep him around and something happens at a hotel or in the ring yeah. or he hurt someone else you know it's you know you can't take that chance it just gives the company a bad look I mean, and again, we don't know the situation. He that's that. I mean, that's the thing. We don't know. It's hard to you know. So, you don't want to speculate and can't take that chance. I mean, you so, can't take. I mean, yeah, but you could say that about a lot of people. Right? You could. I mean, they could have waited. I guess they could have just sent him home. But I don't know. I just feel like there has to have been more to it. Like, but possibly. but to me, I don't know the fact that the family is so. They were very adamant about he's yeah you know, saying he doesn't need help. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, because even like I mean, even Matt, I, I would think too, even for Matt to say something. I mean, they didn't. I didn't. I don't know. I didn't read the statement, but I'm just saying, like they didn't. Even from what I've heard you say, what I've heard others say, it didn't sound like they're maybe they're not really so directly mad at WWE. Maybe not like Matt and all, like they're just saying, hey, he's good, like. Yeah, I don't. Th- I don't know. I I mean, it's not. Are they saying like, oh, he shouldn't have been re- like? It's a shame that so. he shouldn't have been released. Or oh, I mean, there's he's fine. Thank you guys for all the love and support. I mean, he has a lot of money, and again, worst case scenario, he signs with the other company. So I don't think the word. I think Jeff announced he was going on tour with his band. So uh, I don't know. He, yeah, even I mean, the, the, like I think the next day it happened. So. Yeah, I, I think he's got other maybe priorities, or maybe he wants to be with family. I don't know. Maybe life on the road is tough. Mm-hmm. AEW has a lighter schedule. Uh, if he decides to go there, or maybe he just lays low for a bit. I don't know. I mean, if AEW does anything with him, what like what? Exactly. I mean, it's not like it's a long term thing. It's not. It's hard to. I don't know. But that's you know that's where he wants to go, apparently. So. I, I mean, they're, they're friends with the Young Bucks, the Hardy Boys over there, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, it makes sense, but I just, meh, I don't know. It's a weird situation. Hopefully, we'll Speak, get soon enough. Speaking of people, didn't Braun Strowman finally show up? 
The monster, think, or maybe I was dreaming. Monster, I think you're having a fever dream, sir. You get you okay? I know those UCLA. Uh, yeah, it's it's day. it's signing it's signing day. So I was, so people are committing, people are showing up, and everything. So I don't know. You're just no, like, he did show up. I'm I'm messing. With yeah, you. I was <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like at a pay per view or something, though. A uh, Ring of Honor final battle. Oh, was a Ring of Honor one. That's right. Okay. Um, he showed up on their last day. That's kind yeah, of. Yeah, I was gonna say wait. <laughs> <laughs> why would he do that so i wonder how much money he would have gotten for that uh um, that's definitely a one-off right <laughs> <laughs> just the one-off at least until april when they come they supposedly come back yeah um but as of now i don't think anyone's signed i think all the contracts expire at the end of the year um unless secretly behind closed doors they've signed some people or kept people around but it seems like most people are uh, officially coming to terms with the release mm-hmm. of their deals uh, at the end of the year. Our Ring of Honor final battle happened. Uh, I know a number of wrestlers sent in videos, uh, specifically AEW talent, uh, thanking Ring of Honor. I uh, got to see a number of posts. I don't know any of the matches really. I know no, FDR no. kind of showed up after the tag match. Who? Oh. They saw up with uh, the Briscoes. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I believe Jonathan Grisham, I believe is his name, was the last Ring of Honor champion. He just won the title. Yeah, he beat Jay Lethal, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I know he's mm-hmm. uh, a popular individual. So um, yeah, he I believe he won that title. And then uh, that's all I really heard from the yeah, show. That's that's I all I know. Yeah. No, no, I know Dan Housen, my favorite. Uh, the commentary, the commentary. So. Uh, he's still injured, but uh, yeah. So that happened. That's that's all the Ring of Honor news I got there. But yes, Bronx <laughs> here. We hit that quarter for the year. Uh, that's it. That's the end of the year. That's <laughs> all we got to talk about Ring of Honor for. We hit that quarter. Um, Braun Strowman did show up. I believe he is aligned with EC3, and they're kind of doing their controller yeah. nar- narrative gimmick thing. I believe Killer Cross also has recently joined. I don't know. It's some type joined of joined what. Their faction or whatever they're doing. Oh, okay. Well, I thought they, you meant he joined um, ROH yeah, too. That right? whole thing. I don't know. It's, they say they're not a faction, and then I don't know. It's weird. I mean, it's a just, to mark. I think that's what they're trying to do. Just keeping them in the mix, keeping them. Yeah. So keeping them relevant. That's fine. Uh, though. That's all good. When we return, we got some. I uh, got to talk some more serious news. Um, we'll also talk about SmackDown in Los Angeles. And um, before we head over to commercial break, I just have to acknowledge my travel chief, Roman Reigns. You didn't Can think we go to commercial? Did you? Just go. No, go to commercial. There you go. So um, nope. when we return, we'll talk more <laughs> Roman Reigns coming up next. Oh, on boy. <laughs> we are 22S Radio. 22S Radio is 22SMedia.com and 88.1 FM. KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Welcome back to episode 173 of Beyond the Ropes. We are BTR Pro Wrestling Talk. I'm your host, Ethan. You can find me on Twitter at Ethan1995. You can follow James, the analyst, on Twitter at, at JHW Reporter. And you can follow Rob Flores, our producer, at Rob Flores Media. Um, yeah, some unfortunate news we got over the last, uh, I guess, 48 hours or so. Uh, former pro wrestler Jimmy Rave, uh, whose real name is J- James Michael Guffey, uh, passed away at the age of 39 years old uh, due to an, MS, an MRSA uh, infection. MRSA, I believe it's called. Phil MRSA. Makes sense. I believe so. MRSA induction. Um, mm-hmm. Very sad news. Uh, he started in the ring professionally. This comes from the New York Post, by the way. Uh, started in the ring in 1999 and later became a two-time NWA junior heavyweight champion. Also uh, wrestled for TNA, Ring of Honor, as well as uh, WWE Sunday Night Heat. So he did a Ooh, heat reference. Yep. Uh, so James had been struggling with drug addiction for many years. Rave's agent, Bill Burns, or I was like, yeah, what? Burns. I thought you were talking about me. I'm like, sir. Uh, well. No. <laughs> okay, no. Okay. Uh, like, what are you no. talking about? No, 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 no. Um, 
So this was uh, help. This was written uh, with the help of his daughter, uh, Kayla. Uh, his struggles resulted in the amputation of his arm and later both his legs. Cause of it, uh, death wasn't immediately clear. Uh, the Atlanta native had been living in Philadelphia at the time of his passings, passing. A memorial service will be held in Georgia with uh, details to be later. Uh, Rave revealed in October uh, that he had started having trouble walking months earlier, prompting him to visit a surgeon. Uh, he determined I had a MRSA in both his legs and needed to be amputated immediately. Rave tweeted, promoters can tell you along the way Along with my peers, I've had a history with this and would cancel shows often due to this condition. Uh, Ray went on to say pro wrestling was all I ever loved while speaking directly to his fans. Sorry I felt short of your expectations. Ray tweeted, I tried, I really did. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's a sad situation. A number of wrestlers tweeted, uh, including Mick Foley, saying this really hurts. He was only 39. Um, you know, and Pierce tweeted a picture. Uh, several wrestlers, Anne Hoyt, who was his tag team partner, where I know him really from, uh, was TNA Impact, and I'm sure many people know him as well. Um, when he was a part of the Rock and Rave Infection, uh, teaming with Lance Hoyt and uh, Christy Hemi, kind of a rock star gimmick imitation like Guitar Hero. They would bring out Guitar Hero guitars, um, thinking they were actually rock stars. I don't remember something like that. So, I mean, uh, Lance Hoyt himself did tweet out his sympathies. Um, yeah, it's a shame. So, um, Only 39, I, believe, I think? I believe there is a GoFundMe uh, to help uh, fundraise for the funeral costs. But uh, I'm sorry, what, what, what did you say? I said, I think he was only 39, right? He was only 39 years old. Mm -hmm. So very young. Uh, but well-respected amongst peers. Uh, they were all saying he was a very nice individual, uh, very nice to work with. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's unfortunate. It's definitely unfortunate. Um, and as you guys, we kind of talked about before the show, we're kind of getting up here on the one-year anniversary of, of Luke Harper. Mm -hmm. Anyways, well, or do you, what did John, what did you remember the last name? Uh, John, John Huber. What? Huber. Huber, that's right. Good old John. Um, yeah, um, I think, yeah, I think we talked about it before the show. I think it's anniver the anniversary of his death uh, was the 26th. I mean, I don't know if you'd call it un unexpected. I think, you know, I think it, his health was kind of his family. family, maybe a little bit leading up to it, but they kept it very private, I believe. Um, but yeah, I, I saw his wife tweeting. I think she actually wrote um, an article for the Players Tribune, which is, is um, a media outlet or website more or less where athletes um, or, or the family of athletes will kind of share their stories and use that platform without having to go through, um, you know, a newspaper or ESPN or something like that. So, um, so she wrote a piece and, and then I kind of was scrolling down her Twitter timeline and saw a post where um, she was kind of sharing a moment with her kids um, eating burgers and shakes, which is something that um, John and, her used to do i think they did that right after they got married i believe um speaking of which i think they had a wedding anniversary coming up this month um they also had a birthday that he had john had a birthday this month i think in a uh, day or two from 16th, when we're recording this the 16th. yeah and then and then it's christmas and then you know every other holiday around this time so pretty tough time for her but she seems to be doing them as best as she can and and the support that they continue to have um, from the wrestling industry and community has been pretty positive, it seems. And I know uh, Big E took the the loss of John pretty hard, and and um, you know he he still reaches out to to that family and still seems to be pretty close uh, with them. So yeah, so a lot of unfortunate um, news and anniversaries and stuff, especially during the holidays. Um, so just you know, no matter what's going on in, in your life, if you have an opportunity, just make sure you're reaching out to others. Um, whenever you have a chance to, or whenever you're talking to somebody, just make sure you tell them um, or ask them how they're doing. Cause you never know what's going on and maybe they are looking for someone to talk to. So um, with that being said, um, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of it for me. Oh, well, I don't know. Did you see um, kind of switching gears here a little bit? Uh, the young bucks had Shane McMahon trending yesterday. 
No, what happened? Because those young bucks are are claiming that they <clears throat> started the trend of wearing sneakers in oh wrestling. My God. Ooh, which actually makes sense as to why they did what I think they okay. I'll get to that in a minute. Um, so yeah, so they were on um a little web series by Complex, I believe, who they kind of talk to different sneakerheads and people and they view their shoe collections and whatnot. So I think a few other past a few other wrestlers had been on there. I'm blanking on who it was at the moment, but some others who had shoe collections. But anyways, <clears throat> whoever the host was, I should probably know if I'm speaking on this segment, but whatever. Um, <laughs> he actually pointed out and said, oh, that's interesting that you guys mentioned that or whatever. He's like, <clears throat> obviously, Shane McMahon was wearing sneakers back in the day. And the Young Bucks were like, yeah. He wore, um, you know, he, I guess kind of opened the door or was the first to kind of do that. But at the same time, the Young Bucks still, you know, are saying we're the ones who kind of made that trendy um, or made it okay to wear um, sneakers in the ring. Because back in the day, even like during the Attitude Era, uh, fan or the other wrestlers in the locker room would have just said like, what are you doing? Or you're considering yourself or, or they would consider them as like independent backyard wrestlers or something, maybe to some degree, but at the same time, you know, one it's whatever their sneakers at the, but the, at the Uso same time. Sneakers, like, huh? <laughs> haven't the Usos been wearing sneakers? Like they've been, they've they? been wearing sneakers. I mean, sure. Maybe you can, maybe the, the young bucks were one of the first ones or maybe they've been doing it longer or whatever. But yeah, I, I, I thought it was, I just thought it was cool that they at least for one for whatever it was worth gave some credit to shane mcmahon and um but at the same time too i'm now now that i'm talking about it out loud it reminds me of a tweet i saw earlier today someone on my timeline retweeted it i think the fox sports account tweeted uh john cena pumping his shoes yeah and saying oh john cena had um that's right some shoe game back then i think um yeah uh, Rob was mentioning that in the chat, but yeah, um, John Cena was wearing sneakers back then too. I'm not, you know, going to measure year for year, the career of, of when the young bucks started wearing it and where Cena started wearing it, but, um, it's pretty early on that Cena was wearing it. But again, at the end of the day, Shane McMahon has been wearing those sneakers in the ring and Rob's mentioning crime time, I'm sure. So, yeah. So, I mean, whatever, I mean, sure. They're probably most frequently wearing sneakers, but whatever i just thought it was interesting um to see shane trending because i thought maybe shane was all elite or something i don't know <laughs> oh lord it was interesting, it was interesting. Cut that company shane might own aew very soon <laughs> that's what i thought might have happened i had to go check so oh my goodness all right uh speaking of aew let's talk numbers do you have numbers for this week this past week? i do i do um yeah we'll start off with aew as as you mentioned there um, AEW Dynamite had 872,000 70, for their December 8th show. Their December 10th show, um, they had 503,000. So just getting across that 500,000 mark um, for their December 10th show of Rampage, like I mentioned. Um, now getting into the, the WWE shows here. NXT looks like they got a little bit better of a bump compared to last week, but 590,000. Uh, for their December 7th show. Uh, the December 6th episode of Raw was 1.5. Well, it was actually, it was technically, if you're rounding up, it was 1.6 million. And then you have the SmackDown show for December 10th uh, with 2.1 million uh, for SmackDown on that, the last Friday. Um, so yeah, so about what you would expect from some of these shows, a little concerning there maybe for NXT, that's you know kind of competing with rampage at this point um so they're fine we'll, we'll see we're, fine. Like, we're no i mean they're, they're definitely they're, fine but stay with me james l a night night you, you didn't think i was gonna do it there you, you go didn't think i was gonna do it i was gonna swerve you i was gonna do uh braun breaker but um but yeah he's a good hand he's a good hand you know good <laughs> hand oh, might be the future we'll see we'll see um is that the first time anyone's ever said that about a steiner but i mean <laughs> i think before scott before scott went blonde 
Whatever, I mean, bro. they were kind of <laughs> highly regarded. Like, I mean, they were wrestlers. Like, I mean, like actual like University of Michigan wrestlers, and not so much like Musclehead Scott Steiner, which is kind of what everyone remembers now. So it's um, kind of interesting. But let's talk about uh, the McMahon's. Apparently, Vince, Stephanie, uh, both made most influential media influencers list, along with our good old friend Nick Khan. Speaking of Nick Khan. He reunited with an old childhood friend by the name of Dwayne Johnson. Wait. What? This is a swerve, right? Nick Khan is friends with The Rock? Apparently, his sister is the co-creator of the Young Rock television series. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and they grew up <laughs> together in Hawaii. Uh, go to Rock's Instagram because he, he, he put a picture of all three of them having dinner. The other day. Did he body slam him? Uh, I don't know, but I feel like The Rock might be the next owner of WWE. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if anyone's going to buy the company now, it I might mean, be best. The Rock might be uh, move over Disney, move over Fox, NBC. Hey, I mean, I we did say he was going to be president. We didn't say what he was going to be president of. Seven Bucks Productions might be uh, running WWE in the next ten years. That's right. Um, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be against it. To be yeah, honest. exactly. He already took out the XFL from Vince. Um, That's right. He did, huh? Yes, he did. I was thinking about that the other day, but I mean, obviously they haven't played. I think they're supposed to be coming back in twenty twenty two, twenty three. Stages. Uh, they they posted some pictures, so they're in the early stages, still working on it. But uh, they're getting there. They got the pictures going. <laughs> they they got the the meetings going. At least the pictures of the meetings going. I don't know what's talking about, but they're they're having the picture. I don't know, but if you got Nick Khan in those meetings, he's gonna be cutting some people. <laughs> oh dear. So I don't know. I wonder if they were talking wrestling. Um. Yeah, we know. Rocking maybe The Rock potentially showing up to face the head of the table, the best yeah. of the best, the end all be all, the greatest of all time, the universal champion, but, Roman Reigns. I mean, yeah, I and mean, a loser leaves town, gets their contract cut match. Loser I mean, goes, do, do, you, do you think match? they sent him in to talk to The Rock and say, hey, can you come wrestle uh, Roman Reigns? But at a discount? I don't. <laughs> hey, look, we made all these budget cuts for you, Rock. Yeah, we we made a. But see, but those are the things that make me mad. Like one Rock appearance could probably be like three contracts for somebody for a whole year. Yeah, probably. Like, is it is it really <laughs> well, worth it? Like, like the thing is, that even if you're gonna have him at WrestleMania, like people are gonna watch WrestleMania anyways. I'm not saying it. I mean, obviously, it would be that much more if it's if the Rock's there because people are familiar with him from the movies and are gonna know him from that, but. I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, but yeah, so that, I thought that was interesting. That was an interesting photo. Definitely guys. interesting. Didn't well, know a lot that. Of people were kind of surprised by that. Um, I'll have to read those comments later. That, that connection. So uh, mm. kind of full circle kind of moment there. Uh, in a Speaking of, of, of Roman real quick, though, has he not been on the shows or he's like ducking Brock? We'll talk about Brock a little bit later, but is he ducking Brock or what's going on there? So we'll, I'll briefly mention it since we have a few minutes. Uh, this past Friday, Staples mm-hmm. Center, mm-hmm. Los Angeles, uh, for mm-hmm. the last time, yeah. Staples Center hosted uh, Friday Night SmackDown, RIP Staples Center. I believe mm-hmm. we took down the letters last week as well. Yep. Um, yeah. It's supposed to change on the day after Christmas, I think, to crypto. Yeah, after Christmas is going to be the new, uh, yeah, the crypto.com mm-hmm. arena. Terrible name, by the way. Um, yeah. Anyways, they hosted Friday Night SmackDown. Um, I know you were you were really excited to show up to, to go to the show. I told you, look, I don't know. I have a bad feeling about this. I don't think it was necessary for us to go. I know you kept bugging me about getting tickets, and I said, "Imagine." I have a bad feeling about this, and sure enough, our tribal chief Roman Reigns said, "Los Angeles is a B town. I'm gonna go." Say no. <laughs> <laughs> so where did he go? Roman was there. <laughs> he just no showed it, huh? I'm like, oh boy, am I glad we didn't go to that show? Would you? Would you have cried? I would have. I would have. You probably would have seen me in tears. It would have been a depressing what? episode. I would have been. You would have been like. Um, I would have called out sick this past. Uh, you would have been like angry, <laughs> crying. What? Uh, Miss girl or something? I would have been with like angry Miss girl ten years yeah. ago. last week. Angry yeah. uh, Bex girl. Just and shocked Undertaker. <laughs> shocked Undertaker guy. <laughs> Shock Undertaker guy. 
because you would have been jumping over the barricade and trying to attack Seth Rollins. Which is probably not Seth, been. but well, they sent in RK Bro, and I think in the 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 dark match, the post dark match, they sent over Bianca, Becky, um, and who else was there? I think it was them two, and then Tony Storm as well, who was on SmackDown already, and Charlotte. I think it was a four way match or something. And this was, the t- this was a this was a. This was a TV or no? This was a dark match after the show because they yeah, said, but it was on. It was a TV thing though, right? Right. It was a. It was TV a they show. were they were filming. They were doing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It was a live uh, Friday Night SmackDown mm-hmm. show, and then after the show, they sent over Bianca and Becky to have a four way match with Sasha and Charlotte. I think to make up for the fact that the the draw, the Tribal Chief wasn't there, they said, "All right, we'll send in someone over there to kind of, you know, not start a, inside a riot here." Because that would have yeah. started the right. I've been first and you know foremost. Really, right? that that would have that would have made you feeling better. I I mean, they're cool, but um, we gotta go to commercial you know break. What? We gotta go to commercial the break. The disrespect for Bianca Belair is getting ridiculous, sir. <laughs> <laughs> when you come back, we'll talk more. Even about Becky was in that. You just disrespected Becky. I love Becky. We'll be right back. No, you don't. <laughs> we are Twenty Two Us Radio. Twenty Two Us Radio is Twenty Two Us Media dot com and eighty eight point one FM. KKJZ HD3, Long Beach, Los Angeles. Welcome back to episode 173 of Beyond the Ropes. I am your host, Ethan, joined alongside the analyst, James Williams, and producer, Rob Flores. We're talking Friday Night SmackDown. Excuse me, I'm all caught up, you know. Yeah, you're all, you're all yeah, you're, you're still all in your little mood. You, you, were, you were here in tears because Roman wasn't in, in, in your immediate he could county have been or whatever within, here in, in in the la area an hour away from me he could have been an hour away from me with traffic light traffic and maybe he was trying to come over for dinner but he he got the wrong uh address to your house or something i don't know i i just don't know but i'm glad i'm glad if we didn't go um you know television sh- tv shows are good but, you know the tvs are good mm-hmm. back then was a decent enough show um but yeah, I mean, let's talk. Let's talk about this uh, opening segment. Sami Zayn came out in a wheelchair after being brutalized by the tribal chief and the beast the previous week. Wasn't that just him kind of picking up the scraps for no. uh, Brock Lesnar? I mean, it's not Roman's fault. Roman didn't ask Brock to attack Sami before the match. You know, he came out and did his job. He wrestled, defend. He's a fighting champion. You know, that's probably why he had to let the week off. He needed to, you know, rest. He had, you know, had a solid uh, championship defense. No reason for him to show up next week, you know, so. Again, Sami Zayn. But he did get a video package uh, highlighting his return next week. So Bless him. Thank goodness. (laughs) You know, we got a goodness saying he's going to be here this week. I know. Don't get your Where? In in no show. Well, he's a professional. In, he's not Bret Hart. He's just gonna walk. Louisville, out Kentucky, or something like where? Like, if you're not gonna show for LA, <laughs> what he must have been doing something. Maybe it was his daughter's birthday. I don't know. Yeah, it had to be. It must have been because I mean, don't, like honestly though, like if you think like there's shows and there's dates, like especially a TV. Like, I'm really surprised. I mean, I, yeah, they did the package. They said Lesnar. I don't know. I mean, you would just still really kind of think like there's just no way that you can miss this unless it's something important. So I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. Wait, so were the Usos there though? The Usos were there, yeah. And Heyman was there. I think they made Heyman the center. Heyman was there, causing a ruckus. We got to talk about Heyman for a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he came out because, you know, Sami Zayn was mentioning his name, um, saying, oh, well, the tribal chief isn't here. Or Sami Zayn actually the mentioned. That Roman was gonna, wasn't here, and then he was going to attack the council to the tribal chief. You believe that, James? That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then Lesnar came out in the overalls. Did you see his overalls? I did. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then he kind of uh, kind of saved, I guess, Heyman unintentional, unintentionally. Mm-hmm. Um, and saying, you know, he want, wanted to take Sami Zayn hunting. Uh, and then Sami <laughs> Zayn was saying he was a vegan. So... <laughs> <laughs> didn't settle settle right with Brock. Um, and then uh, as they looked like they were about to leave, Heyman was, you know, surprised, you know, Lesnar. This isn't the Brock Lesnar he knew. Uh, and then he kind of got Lesnar riled up, and then Lesnar started attacking 
Zane and the male nurses he had help him out to the ring. Uh, it, they did not look <laughs> like they took uh, some great bumps. It looked really bad. Uh, but anyways, um, kind of teased a bit of a reunion there. So, uh, of course, that uh, crooked journalist, Kayla Braxton, over there backstage, oh. asking uh, <laughs> wow. what, what, what uh, he thinks, how uh, Roman's going to react to the events that have unfolded this past week. So, that seems like a legitimate question to me. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess, but usually she is wrong. She's always trying to stir the pot. Uh, it sounds like a little someone, you know, on the show over here trying to stir the pot, but who, Bob? Me. <laughs> yeah, Rob over there making a ruckus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I knew you're not talking about me. Oh, I no, I would never talk about you. No, you, no, never. <laughs> oh my goodness. Carry on. Um, uh, anyways, uh, there was you said, Jen, hey, now, <laughs> um. Uh, going saying on Brock real quick though. Do you do you like the new gimmick or whatever? I mean, like I, I yeah. He had a do backstage you guys, I, segment. He had a backstage segment. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. With uh, mm-hmm. Adam Pierce. I thought it was, it was great. I thought it was great. <laughs> he had a flip phone. I thought it was great. Like I mean, to me though, that's great though. Like it's attention to detail. I don't mind. And I really kind of thought maybe that was really his phone. I'm still kind of convinced maybe it was. He broke it. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, I but he has enough money. I'm sure he has five of them, like probably that he can activate. You just put the um, I, I think uh, a Lesnar with some character, something, someone that isn't just standing around, bouncing around, mm-hmm. looking like he's obligated to be there, like mm-hmm. this, you know, face Lesnar, you know, this motivated Lesnar. But it, but, it, but, it, but the, it's interesting. But that's it's interesting though, in a way, because. So like you said, oh, motivated, like what is he motivated for, right? Like like what is what is motivating him? What, like... They're giving him stuff to do than just standing around. Yeah, which is true because he's not paired with Heyman. But at the same exactly. time, like, I feel like there's enough here with Brock to me, like... And then again, like, we, we exchanged different gifts and things over the last couple of days here. Um, and there was one of what I think he had the sombrero, I think is the one I shared with you. And yeah, then there's the one with him in the radio. And there's there's some other ones. Where he's actually like, Remember the, the money in the bank? Yeah, but that, but that's what I'm saying. Like he's, he's doing stuff, it's he's he's great. He could be funny, like he can act like there's actually personality. People probably don't just assume he doesn't have personality or they go years and years without seeing it. That they make know, him and, this monster, a literal monster with mm-hmm. basically no emotions, like. Mm-hmm. yeah when you see something like this it's entertaining right but and you know it, and it's the thing is it doesn't kind of it's, it doesn't necessarily feel forced but it's it's just so different because even when he's not even when he was in ufc i mean he was still had the same kind of look and demeanor and, and approach to the way he does with his wwe matches so i don't know i i think it's cool i think it's interesting like whether it's him being motivated or, or whatever the case is, it's it's just it is like a little refreshing just to see. And I think, I mean, sure, you don't want to see this all the time, and it's still it's him kind of happy, playful, but then at the same time, he's still kind of dominant, forceful, and gets his point across, right? Like even just the way he's like, "Oh, I went uh, what was moose hunting." Mm-hmm. He called the moose and- here. <laughs> I named the moose after you. I named him Pierce. And I'm just like, okay. And then he's like, and then I, you know, and then I hung him up and everything else. I was like, and he gutted him. And it was about like 180s, whatever. And he kind of, it was pr- probably the same weight as whatever Adam Pierce was. But it, it was just, I just thought it was great stuff. <laughs> I, I thought it was great stuff. I I, I, probably, I thought it was, I thought it was great. And then even he's like, oh, let me show you a picture on the flip phone. He's like, went through it. And, and like, it, I thought it was great stuff. It's and then even fun. even Adam Pierce following up with it, saying like, oh, hey, like, you know, it was, it was great that on Twitter, hey, it was great that Brock, like, you know, kind of thought of me and stuff. And But no, I so again, I, I just thought it was great. For me, I think, too, the thing I always wonder about with Brock is, like, 
I, I, I guess I maybe always kind of assumed it's people he wants to work with. Like, I, you know, it was kind of like with him and our truth, like, oh, he wanted to work with our truth that one time. Um, like how that stuff kind of comes about, because it's like, how do they decide he's going to work with Adam Pierce? Like, did they have any kind of relationship or, or crossroads in any, anywhere prior to this or anything like that? So it's just kind of interesting because it seems like Brock has really spends a lot of time just the main the main guys he's worked with he, that he'll work with or have storylines with are guys that he kind of knows or has a history with right like I, I feel like that's kind of where a lot of it has kind of come from um i mean he'll have these one-off matches even though they may be for a title or something like with with a kofi or, or with a Sami Zayn or with somebody like he'll have these random matches but i don't know or even what was the the saudi arabia one or something i think was with rusev or something like just kind of these random matches but yeah, I don't know. It's just kind of interesting that he does have some of these guys he can have uh, some chemistry with and, and kind of have some fun segments. So, again, don't need to see it all the time, but I think when they do happen, um, it, I think it really kind of makes you pay attention to them a little bit more on on what they're trying to say. And I think they're pretty effective in what they try to do. I agree. Um, yeah, so uh, Rob putting in this chat really quick, uh, kind of moving away from that. Uh, Braun Breaker apparently defeated my guy, Roderick Strong. How could he? Uh, but after the match, uh, Tommaso Ciampa showed up and beat him down. So He I did. Know. He attacked him. He attacked him. Watch him right here. Welcome back to the deep end, Ciampa told him. I saw and, that. Um, I think it's only a matter of time before Braun gets his, his comeuppance. Is it is this a heel Ciampa now, or what, what's going on here? I uh, mean, he was, wasn't he always a heel? I mean, Braun Breaker is like the fastest rising white meat baby face in all of NXT. Goodness. You is, he is he not? Is he not? Is he not? I have to, I have to quickly acknowledge John Breaker. Action. I mean, oh, I come on now. The ratings what do they pause, do? just beautiful. Yeah, what, what do they do? They stand there and look pretty. <laughs> okay. I mean, you know, I, I still keep getting, I mean, it's just, I guess it's interesting because they're pushing them at the same time and I don't know how much more of the show you were going to be talking about right now, but um, is what? Liv Morgan's on Raw, right? Are we talking about SmackDown? Okay, well, I think Liv is doing great, and I'm jumping. I'm we're jumping all over the place at this she's point. She's getting beat but, up by Beck, Big Time Beck. So she's doing well. One, she's a cheater because she put her arm in the steel steps and then smashed it four times. No, but, no, no, no. She outsmarted and, Liv Morgan. She didn't. She cheated, and then she accepted like her match Blair. for two weeks now or whatever. She did but the same with Bianca, and Bianca didn't cry about it. She took her loss. Yeah. All right. There. That's enough of you and Bianca. Okay. No. Um. But I think. I mean, for what it's worth, I think they're doing a great job of getting people to boo Becky, who's not that far off removed from you know not far removed from a return here recently. And um, she's great. She's killing. Obviously, it. they're pushing Liv here a little bit. We'll see how much of how much of that continues. But I thought um, Liv personally, I thought she did a really good promo against Becky before uh, Becky was very rude and attacked her the way that she did. Actually, Liv was the one who ran in there first. Liv I'll give her was the one who went, um, started it. But, Becky finished it. But she even just said, the way... She mentioned her hot husband and her, her baby, so yeah. that, that's a little pop right there. <laughs> yeah. The drip god, but, Seth Rollins. <laughs> but but I, th- I just thought it was great because like Liv was like standing on, on the entrance way there, right outside the ring, was... was was pouring her guts out there with with what she had to say spilling her guts out i guess is the phrase but um yeah i just i just think too it was, it was just really interesting to see her kind of interacting with the crowd during this promo too and and kind of like real i think those are the kind of things that that make a great baby face is the fact that you can kind of interact with with the fans while you're doing a promo but not get too far distracted and and I just thought there was a lot there that that to me made it pretty great. I mean, uh, people could say what they will or whatever. I mean, I haven't seen anybody poo poo it, but uh, I just think um, that segment or two of the show that I stumbled upon um, live while it was happening, I thought was pretty great stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of uh, someone getting heel heat, for me, that snake Bret Hart bah. talking bad about Hogan again. Yeah, I saw Jen, I saw Rob talk to saying something about it. Bar takes a jab at Hogan for the limited for limited ability. ability. I mean, none of that's wrong. He's not wrong. I, I, I want to know why 
Hulk Hogan keeps trending every every like day or something. He's mentioning Hogan's name. <laughs> yeah, but why else is he trending? Like, because he's the immortal Hulk Hogan. But he's, but then when I click on it, people aren't saying anything. He's like in the top five. He's it's you know it's Austin, it's Hogan, it's Rock, it's Michaels, yeah. and it's Roman Reigns. That's sure, sure. I mean he's no. great, but what does it matter? Like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I just don't know why he's trending. It's, like, he's not doing anything. He's not on a show. I think people he's, just are finding excuses to just talk, talk about, talk bad about him. <laughs> I guess. I mean, that's. I mean, that's. I would do something on my feet about. I, I just keep thinking something happened to the man. That's all. I hope not. I don't wish ill will toward anybody. Um, mm. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's talk about the future. Time. Let's talk about the future. I know we're all over the place. Let's talk about Hook. Who? Hook. Who? Hook. Who? <laughs> I'm not Taz's son. Anything. Do you know? Do you know? Oh, and they, that's right. That's right. Okay. So he's he's been a part of Team Taz for now, what, a year and a half? Been showing up on television. Mm-hmm. He had his debut match this past Friday on Rampage. Maybe that's why the ratings went a little bit up. Oh, Hook Hook. is the young dude who hasn't really, he didn't wrestle a whole lot, right? Uh, against Fuego del Sol, I believe his name is. Um, a luchador. Anyways, he came out to an action Bronson theme. Uh, came out and uh, he's a tactical wrestler, right? You know, he um, won the match with a uh, Taz mission, if you will. Uh, renamed the red the red drum, uh, which is murder, spelled backwards. Um, you can watch the entire match on Twitter, by the way. It's uh, decent stuff. So I don't know. People have been raving about Hook for months, at least on my social media feed. So they finally got a taste of him, um, and he he looks good in the ring. So we'll see. Yeah. Him. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I don't have anything. No, I was just saying. Like I I think. I did watch a little AEW this week, and I think it was just it kind of confused me because I, I thought Taz was on commentary or something, and I was like, he was, but none of his guys I don't think were in the ring. Uh, he called commentary he, he, for Rampage. So he, yeah, but this he was the Rampage I was watching. He does. So he has a he. Uh, I guess filling in for uh, Jr. Oh, he's filling in for Jr. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. JR, I believe, had his 12th round of chemo today. Yeah. So he has 10 more. 10 more rounds, or not chemo, I'm sorry, radiation. Mm, okay. um, so. Yeah, no. Okay, so that makes a little bit more sense. I was just like, what? Like, No, I mean, Taz... Because I remember in. he had a stable, and then I was just like, did they end that already? Taz will fill in when, when needed. Um, and then I thought no, yeah, he's that makes sense. right now. So, I mean, he does commentary whenever they basically need to throw someone on commentary. Um, makes sense. But yeah, so... I thought that was interesting. Um, who else haven't we talked about? Seth Rollins, did you see his drip this week? Nope. Looking great. Um, uh, that Let's talk about the WWE Championship match. We haven't been really talking about it. That snake, Bobby Lashley, ah, inserted yeah. himself into the match. That sneaky, sneaky snake uh, somehow managed to beat three of the top competitors on Raw. I haven't finished watching like a- it. Now it's a four-way match or what? It's a four-way. It's going to be the WWE champion, Big E, defending against Kevin Owens, the drip god himself, the revolutionary, uh, Seth Rollins, and Bobby Lashley in a fatal four-way match on day one. Uh, Does Owens take the pin? I don't know. Is he leaving? (laughs) If he takes a pin, he's out. There's no. If he's the one that takes a pin, yeah, he's he's leaving. Who do you say is in this match, Seth Rollins? Bobby Lashley. That's right? all that, that matters. So just Seth Rollins. That's all you need to Big E, you're rude. Big E. <laughs> and Kevin Owens. And Owens. Owens definitely taking the pin. There's no way he doesn't. <laughs> Even but, in the case, he might take the pin. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but I think Big E wins this match still, right? Well. I think this is them just stacking up the deck on, on, on Big E to make it. Like, right. I mean, he's got three heels against him. Yeah. I, I think that this is just to kind of just kind of 
They're trying to you know, definitely make this a big pay per view because you got Brock yeah. and Roman in this one. Mm-hmm. The Usos yeah, Brock's are definitely okay. going to win. I'm sorry. I said Brock's going to win. He's gonna he's gonna pin Roman Reigns. How dare you? Overalls. How dare you? Roman Reigns is gonna lose to a guy in overalls. I How do you feel about this? you for the next week? Okay. All right, bet. <laughs> All right, and until next time, <laughs> this episode of Beyond the Ropes has been absolutely too sweet.